what's up? Welcome to Life in Air Show. I'm your host, Jason Wojo. On the Life in Air Show, we help people make more, work less, and create lives they love. And actually, on this episode, we're going to start with what I said earlier with making more. I am joined by my co-host, Polish Peter. What's up, bro? Hey, man. How's it going? It's going great. You know, um, we are recording this, actually, and uh, we uh, just had our Life in Air three-day Get a Life getaway here in Raleigh, North Carolina. It was awesome, man. It was great seeing you. We changed some lives. Uh, well, we can talk about that a little bit later. We mentioned it in the episode. But today, we have David Richter on, man. He is uh, was introduced to me by a mutual friend. And uh, David is a guy that is, he has a CFO company and he deals and encourages people to follow the profit first model, which is a, a book that came out by Mike Michalowicz. Um, no, wait, I, I'm probably mispronouncing that because you said it's, it's somewhat. Michalowicz. Uh, Michalowicz. There you go. <laughs> that is an absolutely revolutionary book for managing your finances and your business and making sure you're always profitable. Uh, I'm really excited to talk to him. Yeah, man. And it's one of those books, you know, Profit First, when I first read it, it's one of those books that has an impact on you, on your business, yeah. because that the model, the, the, the system, whatever you want to call it, completely flips what we've been taught, you know, here in this country, you know what I mean? And uh, when you start looking from that perspective, I think there's a ripple effect that happens in people's businesses. So I'm really excited about having him because we talk specifically in real estate, what that should actually tell you. If you're not in the real estate business, it doesn't mean that you need to not listen to this episode because guess what? By him coming on and saying that this is applying for real estate business, that means that it can apply for any business and any every business. business. Yeah. So listen from that perspective, from your own business perspective, see how you can apply these principles and profit first into your business. Yeah, man. He shares a lot of nuggets here. I can't wait for it. Let's go into the interview right now with David Richter. David, what's up, man? Welcome to Life in Your Show. Uh, thanks for having me, Jason. Man, I am really excited to dive into today's uh, discussion uh, and the topic because I'll tell you, man, so many business owners, as you know, struggle with profitability. They struggle with the ups and downs of businesses. Uh, they, they, they struggle with cash flow and it's, it's not necessary. There's totally a way around this. You are going to talk about that today. And, you know, I, um, I have some experience with profit first myself. We can talk about that later, but, um, this is a model that I think every business owner, every entrepreneur, every real estate investor needs to incorporate before we get into that though, specifically, I am curious about your story and how you got into this. Um, so can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and kind of like where, how you got to the point you are? Sure. Yeah. I'd love to. Everyone likes talking about themselves, right? So <laughs> right. Let's, let's dive into that story. So I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad when I was in college. A good friend gave that to me and that really changed my mindset, you know, because my dad, mom, you know, typical middle-class Midwestern, you know, like we met, lived in the Midwest, just good, solid people. But, you know, I never had been exposed to anything like that. So that's what really got me kicked off. And so I bought a house when I was uh, engaged actually and started fixing it up then rented it out for a couple months and then moved into it. And that yeah, was a home run deal because we lived in there for two years and then put a lease option tenant when we moved out and he paid early, like on time was super tenant, then cashed me out six months later. I'm like, what the heck? Cause I was working in a company too, where we had about 80 lease option deals and like two of them had ever cashed out. So I knew my <laughs> chances were really low. And once that happened, I'm like, this is awesome. So my, like, I need to keep doing this. And that's why I got more of the, you know, the itch for real estate investing. And then I actually started working with a real estate investing company at that time, uh, worked nights and weekends, like for, I think it was like eight months before I came on full time with them. And cause I just wanted to learn, consume and help and get the mentorship and knowledge while I was, you know, basically helping them, you know, with whatever they needed. And so during that time there, I sat in a lot of different seats. I was there for five years. I was in acquisitions, dispositions, marketing, you know, like uh, the transaction coordination, property management, project management, anything you could think of in the real estate investing side, I was, you know, I got to sit, sit in those seats. And then we also did every type of deal you could think of too. So I got exposed to a lot of different deal types, a lot of different things about just small business. And one of the seats I sat in was the finance seat. And that to me opened up 
a whole new world. Cause I had always been a numbers guy, you know, I like that stuff. And, you know, Robert Kiyosaki, everything that he had written, you know, like really resonated with me about assets and liabilities. And then once I saw that in a small business, that really sparked with me. And we grew that company from about five deals a month to about 25 deals a month. Mm -hmm. So we were doing about at our highest point, about 300 deals a year. But I also, during that time when we scaled up, it was near the end of the time that I worked there where I saw the financials. And I said, oh my gosh, you know, like we're doing almost, you know, six, seven figures sometimes a month, but we're spending that much, you know, just as much too, is going out the door. And that to me was kind of a wake up call. Like really doesn't matter about your top line. And I could see it all the way from acquisitions to disposing of the property and selling it or renting it, you know, like how that all flowed through and got the school of hard knocks sitting with the CPA sitting down and just going through all of that. And then I realized like that was, you know, that's crazy. So at the end of that five years, I actually moved across the country because I had, I had some rentals sold those. Uh, and then I moved across the country to be closer to family, started working with another investor and went in. And the first thing we did was I said was, where are your books? You know, like, how are your financials right now? As like, even before I started working with him, I said, would you be comfortable showing me where you stand currently? Because he, you know, like, I want to make sure we're going into this good. And he's like, okay, well, I looked at it and it was a mess, you know, like as far as just not, didn't have any clarity where he was. So we did, I went in there, helped him get that clarity, you know, with the books and just, you know, giving him some financial access, you know, like on a fractional CFO type basis for that as one of the duties that I did. And that he looked at me like a uh, several months down the road and said, this has changed my life. Like you've changed my life because now I know I can make better decisions now. And that to me was a light bulb moment. Like that was the pivotal point again in my life. So rich dad, poor dad, and then the investor saying like, you've changed my life about, you know, just knowing the numbers. And then I said, I'm going to start a business, simple CFO to help real estate investors. That's where that idea came from. But then I had a call from a mentor who said, you need to read the book profit first. So my life was constantly changing at this point because then I read that book and took 10 pages of notes like that evening, read the whole thing and said, this needs to be the framework that I incorporate into real estate investing businesses. Then I've got more stories from there, but that's how simple CFO started. And we started teaching the profit first methodology to real estate investors, but it was a lot of good people. And like, like I say before, I had great, I've had, I have great parents. I have a great wife, a great daughter. I've got great people that have been in my life. It's like, they pointed me in the right direction along the, you know, along this path. And it's been, it's been a fun journey, you know, like to help real estate investors with their, with their cash and with their finances. Well, man, you know, it's interesting because, you know, people, uh, uh, whether it's a real estate investor or a business owner, entrepreneur, they're so wrapped up in the business sometimes that they forget to look at the numbers. Like they forget to realize like, wow, like they, they wonder why they have no money, uh, and they're, and they're, and especially the real estate investors, like I, I see a cyclical behavior patterns, like all the time, especially if you're like a rehabber or something, you do a deal, you make all this money and you're broke until you close your next deal. And it's just this up and down cycle. It's very stressful and it's hard to think clearly and, and not have a scarcity mindset when you're going through that. And so I have no doubt that this guy like looked at you and said, wow, this is, this is amazing. This is transformative in my business. And so, uh, I, and I love the profit first model as well. And so tell people a little bit about that. If they're not familiar with what this teaches, like w tell us a little bit about the profit first and how it applies to real estate, especially. If I could boil it down to the most simple fact, it's like the envelope system for businesses. You open up bank accounts, instead of envelopes, like if you've ever heard of that, Dave Ramsey teaches that there, you know, like common sense taught that years and years ago, you know, like grandparents and whatnot, but you literally the, the tactical or like the practical effect is you open up bank accounts and call them profit owner's compensation, owner's tax, you know, and then you've got an income and expense bucket. You open up separate accounts and you've got three main accounts. I call them the golden trio because I'm a nerd. So like, I love Harry Potter. I love Star Wars. You know, I love all this, the big epic stories that have those three main heroes and you need three main heroes in your business, always driving you forward. So it's that profit account, your owner's compensation and the owner's tax. So if I had to boil it down, it's like the envelope system, making sure you're paying yourself because the, the, higher level of like the whole mindset is we get hammered into it or the formula that gets hammered into us as entrepreneurs or real estate investors is sales minus expenses equals profit. Meaning I make a sale, I sell a house, I pay everyone else and their mother. And then if I have anything left over, that's what I get to keep. 
And usually that's a one-time event at the end of the year or sporadically whenever they can. But the formula, the profit first mindset is sales minus profit equals expenses. Meaning I take, I have a sale, I allocate to those accounts that I was talking about, those golden trio accounts first. And then what I have left over is the expenses to run the business. And it's that, it's that subtle shift and just that one, you know, key shift there of thinking of taking that profit first and being a profitable, healthy business before you run yourself into the ground because you're paying everyone else and never think about yourself when you are the most important asset to the business. I mean, no, no matter where you are. So that's what in a nutshell. That's, I love this, man. I love that concept. Well, let me ask you this. Well, their business owner is asking the question, well, dude, I'm, that's great. That's a great idea. I love it. But I am barely making it from month to month. How am well, I going to pay myself first? How am I going to do profit first? I love this. I love this question because that usually reveals the mindset that got them there. So I would say, you know, what got you here won't get you there. So if you're in that mindset right now, we have to do something radically different in at least in a practical sense to change this up. So you might not be able to allocate, you know, 10% to profit right now or pay yourself 50% of what's coming in, but where can we start? How can we start making it a habit? So like what I tell people is set up those accounts and just start allocating 1%. Do what you can from the next deals. If you're living off of the 100% now, you can live off of 98%. So like, you know, it's, I make sure that people at least get the habits forming because it it's a big mental shift, but the practical point is not that big. It's what we normally do. It fits in with our behaviors. We're checking our bank accounts. We're doing those things already. But if we can instill a habit, that's the most important thing. So if you're barely above water, you probably don't want to stay there. Like if you're living deal to deal, if you're in the real estate rat race right now, you probably want to get out of that. This will help you build the habits to get out. And you need to start where you are. Don't tank yourself because in the book, it shows like, here's the targets you should be shooting for, you know, these big percentages. Well, don't start there. Start where you can just to start getting yourself in a different way of thinking and different actions that you've taken so far to get yourself living deal to deal. So, man, I love that. And and it also reminds me a lot, Peter, when we talk about like the life in our vision, um, Mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter where you are, but you got to start. And and so David, we do, for instance, we do these live events and they're three days long each. And people will say like, Hey, I don't have time to go. I'm too busy. And I'm like, hello, just like you said, like right now, like if you're barely making ends meet, that's a perfect sign. You're the exact person who needs this. We're, we're saying the same thing. Like, Hey, if you're too busy to, to take three days out of your life, you're the exact same person we need to talk yeah. to. And so what I love about profit first is, and you said this is it, it really works with human psychology versus against it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I know in the book, he talks about the, the research that shows, for instance, that you, if you eat on smaller plates, you will eat less food. It's like been, been shown, been shown in, in conclusively. And so it's kind of like the same thing here. I think where you're, you're taking plates uh, of money and putting them aside in a very specific order. And it's kind of like the same thing. I think of like, you know, um, for instance, uh, in, in our church, if, if you're, if you're a believer, you've heard of tithing. And the tithe mm-hmm. is like, Hey, you're supposed to give 10% of your, of the, off the top uh, of, of what you make. And if you wait till the end, there's never anything left. There's never anything left. You got to do it first. And so what you're doing is analogous to that is like, Hey, here's what we're going to put money into first. And then with what's left over, we will run our business. And I also love what you said. I want the listeners to really ca- capture this it doesn't have to start like in some massive amount and you have to revolutionize your business in, in a month. Like this is a process. It's kind of like you, you, like you said, 1% uh, at a time or whatever that looks like until you are a healthy functioning entity. Yeah. And it, we work with, when we work with people, we build plans based on where they are. And it usually takes anywhere from four quarters to eight quarters. So that's like one to two years, you know, like of actual, adjusting your percentages, getting to where you need to be. So that's where we tell people, don't be discouraged where you are right now, where you are is where you are. I mean, you're in the same boat as a lot of real estate investors, only you're doing something about it. So, and I love what you said about church too, because it's the same thing with church. Like if you don't feel like you need church, you know, that's when you need church, you know, right, right. and, and with the tie too, if you're taking that right off the top, it's the exact same concept. Only now 
not only are you giving, you're also making sure that your business and yourself is healthy, like that you can sustain the business. It, even if you have a ton of employees, let's just say there's someone listening who has a bunch of employees like, well, they have to make payroll. Well, you have to pay, you have to be paid too. If you don't get paid, no one gets paid, you know, like eventually if you're going bankrupt. So it's like, we got to make sure the business is healthy no matter what. And if you're starting out, the sooner, the better. I've got a great story of, I've got the profit first for real estate investors podcast. And I had someone on there who is doing a lot of deal flow. He's in a, he's doing a lot of deal flow and he teaches, but he's one of those people that teach and does it. So I really like him. And he came on and he said, I start, I have profit first in each of my businesses. You know, I, I start that anytime I start a business, I set that up right away because I calculated it one time that if I would have started this, when I first started real estate investing, I'd have $5 million more in my account cash, like right now mm. to invest. Um, that about like, once I heard that, I, after I picked myself up off the floor, you know, I said, right. that's it. That's great. You know, like that's to show people, it doesn't matter where you're starting now. If you've done zero deals or one deal, start this system because it's a system. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This is not an overnight. Like you said, Jason, this is not an overnight thing. This is a process. Start where you can, right now, if you've done one deal or a thousand deals, it just get this to instill the good habits of being profitable. Well, you know, the thing too, that I, that really, one of the things that after I read the book, I was like, man, this is so self-evident. Why didn't I think of this? <laughs> it's right. one of those, and it's kind of like, almost like, I'd say it's almost a universal truth that anything super powerful and true in retrospect, always seems like I should have known this, right? But that's just not right. the way, that's not the way we think. And so everybody, first of all, has to go out and read this book. You are coming out with a, a, a book that is specific for real estate investors. Is that, is that the case? Yep. It should come out later this year, barring edits and publication yeah. and all that good stuff. And the, man, the book world is nuts, but it's called Profit First for Real Estate Investors. So if you read the original Profit First by Mike Michalowicz, it's basically just honing in exactly for real estate investors. And, and uh, yeah, excited to get that out to the Dude, real estate investors. That's world. awesome. And, you know, so, so talk to me a little bit about, you said, you, you, what did you call it, the golden trio? Yes, the okay. golden trio of accounts. So like Ron, Harry, and Hermione, or Luke, Leia, Han, you know, like you've got those golden... <laughs> right the golden trio of people always pushing the story forward. You need those people, those bank accounts in your business. And that's profit, owner's compensation, and then owner's tax. Because the profit is for running a successful business, the reward, the owner's compensation. A lot of people start out working in their business and not paying themselves. That's to force yourself to pay yourself something like for the work you do in the business and then owner's tax, like making sure that your business actually covers your personal taxes or the quarterly business taxes or like anything that is company or personally related. I'm not talking about property taxes in the owner's tax account. This is for the owner's benefit of their taxes. So it's those three that should push your story forward and have the good endings like the other well, movies. And man, well, when I, when I read that, I was, when I, when I learned that I, um, first of all, I, it was, it was, I don't know why, but this was totally surprising to me. So I work in, uh, in our company and I'm an, I'm an owner. And yep. so it was totally like, I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier, but I'm like, wow, I should be getting compensated just for being an owner. And then I should also be compensated for the work I do in the company. They're not the same thing. They're two separate right. things. You yep. know, I'm taking risks. I'm doing certain business strategic things. Uh, that I should profit from that is uh, not related to my hands being uh, in in the work itself. And when I when I read the when I first read the parts about um, the owner tax, I'm like, whoa, wait, what is this? Like, my company is going to pay my tax bill? Like, this is awesome. Like, and so it really it, it's really an awesome an awesome awesome like uh, uh, formula. And I think it's um, something that every business owner can, can look into this. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see people make when they start to move down this path or maybe, you know, mistakes that even an intermediate or advanced user of this might, might run across. Put all the money into the profit bucket. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so first thing is just not starting or quitting, you know, like okay. that's the, probably the biggest thing because it's a system and it's a process and it takes the time to, and the discipline to make it a habit. You know, like that's the biggest thing you can take from this is creating the habit. And you can only create the habit by consistent action. 
So making sure that you consistently do it and start it. So the biggest one is not starting it. Then another thing is exactly what you were saying, Peter, like too much, too quickly. Like, Oh, I'm just going to go right for the targets right away because I know I could do this and you know, and it's like, well, did you just wreck your business then? Like now, can you not make payroll? Can you not do these things? And now your business is totally tanking or, you know, like, because if you make radical changes like that, we've seen some people do that and they're like, Oh, profit first doesn't work. I wasn't able to do the percentages. It's like, well, no, got to have a plan to roll it out on the time basis that works for you. That's why this is not a cookie cookie cutter thing. This is where are you in your business and how can you roll this out? Those are the two biggest things. Um, The other like feedback we get to is like, oh, when we first start with people is like, oh, a bunch of bank accounts. Like, I don't want to do that. That would be a lot of headache. And it's like, hello, you're setting up a long-term system here. Like the headache of setting up those couple accounts up front is worth the end result of being where you want to be as a business owner, like taking that time to set that up. And I tell people, if it it really bothers you, just set up one account, call it profit and transfer 1%. Like just start building the habit, you know, like just get in the habit. So those are some of the things that either people tell us or that I've observed when we come into this, you know, like as far as the biggest obstacles to starting. Well, man, let me, let me go back to what you said before about, and and I know we mentioned this earlier, but setting yourself up with the habits. Like, so for instance, this is where I think people need to be really careful because let's imagine now you're, you're starting to diet, right? And you want to go right from Doritos and Mountain Dew and nachos to chicken breast and broccoli. Yep. And it works for like a day or a week. And then all of a sudden you crash and burn and now you get disappointed and you say, dieting doesn't work. I can't lose weight. Well, it's because you didn't take small actions. You didn't take baby steps in the direction. And this is the exact same thing. Don't set yourself up for failure. If you're, if your expenses are eating up, you know, 95% of all your money, like don't try to like b- drop it to 50. Like you, you get maybe make it 92 or, or 93 or wh- whatever, like take that, take that small, the small chunks. I really want to emphasize that. And I'll tell you, man, the, the bank account thing. And, and so uh, for what you're referring to is essentially what we talked about earlier is, is you using human nature and, and the rationale of the profit first, right. Is that you are, you have different bank accounts, not only for clarity, but so you don't, you don't dip, like you don't, you're not going to like dip into accounts and, and, uh, and start stealing from Peter to pay Paul kind of thing. And, hey. and <laughs> <laughs> actually my middle name is Paul. So yeah. So well, there you go. <laughs> myself over and over. I'll tell you that the whole bank account thing was a whole lot easier than I thought. And I, and I have heard that some banks are more difficult to do this with. We mm-hmm. literally, they just asked me like, Hey, how many accounts do you want? And I'm like, uh, one, two, three, four, five. You know, I just, I said, I just said, and what I've done and, and by the way, I, I don't think I mentioned this yet, but we do that. We follow profit first for life and air. Awesome. Um, yeah, man, we've been doing it for a couple of years now. It's something that uh, I am so glad I did because it's just given me so much peace. I can think more clearly. I can look, um, you know, on my bank app and I see all the different accounts and how much money is in each different account. And I know, Hey, we're going to have enough for taxes at the end of the year. Hey, we have enough for this. We have enough for that. Um, and it's, it's been very, very peaceful, um, as a business owner to see that and have that, have that confidence. Um, and what I've done is like, I've named each different account, like the way profit first recommends, but I've also put the target percentage that I'm trying to achieve in that name. So I know every month right there, I see what percentage is, is coming in, going from my income account to my, to my, you know, owner's account, to my profit account, to whatever. And so it's just like super easy to do. Um, and so like, I'm, I'm really excited uh, for anybody that has not had experience with this. The first step, I guess, is to read the Profit First book. How do people find out more about what you're doing, uh, David, and where they can learn more about, about your stuff, especially if they're a real estate investor, you have a lot of experience in real estate itself, and then you take the Profit First uh, CFO angle to it, and you have, you have a lot to, to, to offer people. So ProfitFirstREI.com. That's where we house our podcast. We just want to give free info there. That's like making sure that you can set this up because I'm more about getting this message out there than anything. So that's where the book will launch too. It'll be on Amazon, but like once it's officially out, that's where it'll be announced. 
And then also, if you want to work with us, simplecfosolutions.com. So we have a company that implements Profit First for real estate investors. It's a fractional CFO service. We focus on Profit First is our foundation, making sure you get into those habits and you've got someone there to help guide you through that process. And then we do the other things too, the fractional CFO type services, making sure you've got your numbers where you really want them to be, that financial clarity. Then we do wealth building as well too inside of Simple CFO. So simplecfosolutions.com was that. And then the information is profitfirstrei.com. If you're a real estate investor, we have a Facebook group too. It's a private one, private uh, profit first for real estate investors. So if you search that and you just say, I heard it on life and air, we'll make sure to you know, accept you into the group. Awesome. We have, we have more questions for it, but I want to make sure we get that information out there early. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to put that in the notes, man. But I have one question because Vojo kind of touched on it. And I think you touched on that earlier. I don't want this to be overlooked yeah. because when you set up these accounts, not only, like he said, you know, I have more peace of mind, but I think that has a ripple effect as how you actually run the business. Oh yeah. Especially a real estate guy. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you are, have this kind of up and down then it's a very stressful way of running a business. And when you start looking at marketing your, you know, houses for houses and you look in your account, I'm like, oh, I don't have money to do that. It's very tight kind of a way to do this business. However, when you set the profit first, you have the peace of mind, right? You have, you run the business differently. Talk a little yeah. bit about that. You run the whole business differently because like you said, there's so much ups and downs. Now you're actually projecting. That's why I love profit first even more than traditional accounting practices or whatnot, because your financial statements give you past data, which is good. You can try and plan for that. But profit first is about current, your current financials, like what is coming in right now and what can we plan for? Because you can, you know, as the business owner, the real estate investor, when your wholesale deals, you know, like you can kind of project that and project what, you know, like what's going to close. But if you have a system like this, this helps you to say, well, I want to have a buffer. You know, like because real estate investing, it could be, it could say it's going to close this day, but it could be three weeks later be, or six weeks later because the buyer backed out or whatever. You know, it's like, you know, and point it back on the market and, you know, just all the things that go with real estate. So we tell people like this, we're going to help you even out that cash flow. Like let's build reserve accounts. Let's build, you know, like let's build some safety, peace of mind into your business. So that way, if stuff does happen, you're running it now, just like you would, you know, like you're still doing the consistent marketing efforts. You're still going out there and doing what you need to do in order to get to where you want to be. And that is one of the things, like you said, Peter is like, if you can, if we can give them that peace of mind, it gives them more clarity to make better decisions. So they're going to have clear numbers, of course, with their finances, but also if you're not living deal to deal, or if you have that peace of mind, you can make more rational decisions too, of like, okay, this property didn't close. We're going to use the money from the reserve account to cover this month. But if we have anything in between, we'll fill up that reserve account again, and then we'll keep, you know, the, the percentages, you know, and it's like making sure that they have that plan. So yes, it doesn't just affect the clarity. It affects how they run the entire business and how they plan their cash. Right. And then put your business mindset, more of an abundance mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. when you actually make day to day decisions, and you know in the back of your mind that my profit you know, account is good, my taxes are good, and especially like, you know, when you, the quarterly is coming up and you know that account is good, you can actually make very good decisions in the business as opposed to from a scarcity mindset when you're oh, like- big time. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's a big game changer. That's why, that's why it's so important that you read the book and that you have the discipline to follow it because it's more about the habits those habits create the peace of mind. It's not just, it's not just, Oh, it's this one and done system. It's creating that habit and then sticking to it. That creates the long-term peace of mind. Okay. I got a quick question. As far as like dispersing the money into the accounts, mm -hmm. is there an automatic way or is this like you go and actually put money into it? I've heard of some online banks that have some automatic features, but a lot of the people, a lot of people work with, you know, the chases or the big banks, or they've already got this set up. So usually it's getting a rhythm of, okay, how often do we sell properties or how often do we collect rent? And do we need to disperse once a week, once a month? You know, like what is our rhythm going to be? Is that twice a month? Like he suggests in the book, I would say for real estate investors, if you're doing high volume, you at least transfer the money once a week. And for a lot of people, it's setting up 
here's where my current percentages are. And then they physically go into the bank and, tra- and transfer those. And honestly, that helps create another habit. Visceral, you know, it's very visceral where they actually have to transfer the money and see it going from their income account to these other accounts and saying, boom, this is how much I did for profit. You know, like my owner's comp is good. OPEX is at this. So I know I have this much to spend for this amount of time, you know, like till my next deal closes or till my next allocation that I'm doing, depending on your business. So that's also a really good thing. Cause yes, you could set it up automatically, but at the beginning we have like the owners do it too, because we want the owner to see like, this is what you're actually doing. You're putting the profit away for yourself and for your business. Like you've never had this before. Your accountant for years and years now has said you've made X in profit, you know, your bottom line, but you've never seen it in your account. Well, this is the practical way to have that money in the account when your accountant says, this is what you've made in profit. So that's where we like people to do it, you know, like and actually transfer it sometimes too, because it's more of that habit building and the reward of like, this is the money going into those accounts. So this, yeah, this is awesome. We've spent a lot of time talking about profit and making sure that is a priority for somebody that really has quite a number of expenses and they have high overhead. Do you have any, cause that, that has to ultimately come down or they oh, need yeah. to become more profitable. Do you have any, any tips or things you've seen that you've been able to help others with in, in terms of cutting down expenses? Yeah. There's an expense analysis we run and Mike has a great one in the book too. And that we use that methodology. You literally print out your expenses for a, over a, mere, a period of time, whether that be 12 months, six months, the last three months, the last quarter or whatnot. And you literally go through and mark each one. And you say, is this P R or you, is it profitable? Like this is generating me cash and I can't let this go. Is it replaceable either with something cheaper or more efficient that ultimately becomes more profitable to you? Or is it unnecessary? So uh, we, and we do that with expenses, but some people's biggest expense items are their payroll. So we have people do that with payroll too. Is it profitable, replaceable, or unnecessary? Does, do I need this seat? Can I automate it? And that sounds like, oh man, I could never do that because of our team and whatnot. And it's honestly, you've got to do something or you'll lose your whole team if you get too far up down the road. So you have to make sure that your people are the right people. If they're the right people in the right seat, then they're probably profitable and you'll do what you can to keep them. But if you've got any doubts that you can't, you cannot keep running that way with those type, you know, if you're talking about 90, 95, a hundred plus percent of operational expenses, you've got to make some hard decisions. So that's the hardest part usually with people is facing what they've created, the habits of paying everyone else first and paying, you know, all their expenses, their subscriptions, all the different stuff that they've got going on and saying, is this really profitable? Is it replaceable with something more profitable or is it unnecessary? So that's how we do it. We, and you print it all out as the owner and you just mark that through. And then you come back with your team or by yourself and say, anything that's a you, I'm going to cut right away whether that's a subscription, whether that's, you know, a vendor, whether that's whatever it is, we have to get rid of this line item. The R's would be like your action items. How do we make these, you know, replaceable things better? Is this a system or does, does this person need more training or is there an actual, you know, like, do I need to replace it with, you know, something cheaper because there's a better, you know, functionality out there. And then if you market P the action item from there is how can I spend more money here and leverage more or, and, you know, like if it's a person that's profitable, am I providing them the training to keep them, you know, profitable and make sure that they've got exactly what they need because I want to build our culture. So that's how I would do an expense analysis where you are right now and can be very sobering. Well, you know, as, as you're talking, uh, David, I'm thinking of Mike's other books and how they kind oh, of yeah. really are interlaced with this because yep. part of cutting expenses is becoming better at running your business. And so for instance, he has clockwork, which is about systemizing your business. And, and, and he has pumpkin plan, which is about finding your high equity clients, the people you're making your best, your best clients. And yep. so it's, so what, what I'm really hearing is like, this is, this is an interlaced system to take your finances and, uh, and mesh that with your growth as a business owner and, and knowing how to do things best. What are the, uh, one question I was thinking of too is, in the book, he talks about these target allocation percentages, how much roughly uh, as a guideline, you should be putting in each of these different accounts based on revenue. Like I think he broke it up by revenue in the book. Like there's a matrix table. 
Do you do the same thing with real estate investors or is it by type of real estate investing? Like how have you done that? Or are they the same numbers? For most real estate investors, especially if you're selling, it's the, it's really a lot the same because Mike even took into account real estate investing and everything. Okay. But for landlords, it's a little different. Like in the book that I'm, that I'm coming out with, that's one of the big changes is the taps for landlords because that's kind of your long-term play and you've got repairs and maintenance that are always going to come up. So we don't just break it out with the five main accounts, like the income operate, you know, the expense, the profit, uh, owner's comp and owner's tax. We also include another one for repairs, vacancy, and turnover, because you're always going to have that, you know, like those capital expenditures, anything there that, so we have another account that we basically say you should be allocating at least 15% of your real revenue you know, like to that account every month because your real revenue, we also do it a little different on the rental side or the landlord, the buy and hold side where your real revenue is calculated by your top line income, rental income, minus your obligations like to lenders, whether they be interest only loans or a mortgage that has PITI. So then what you have after those obligations, that's basically passing through, you pay that, you know, you get your income, but you're passing it through to them. Then after that is what your real revenue is as a buy and hold company. And so we do, we change the targets on the landlord side because we include the repairs, vacancy turnover, because you should always be allocating for those because I always come up as buy and hold investors. Got it. And so your book is relevant for all kinds of real estate investors or only certain types, would you say? I would say it's relevant for people in the single family residence. And I would say multifamily too, because I have the buy and hold component. Um, but it's for anyone doing any type of selling real estate. Well, if that's, uh, you know, wholesale, fix and flip, turnkey, whatever that might be, and buy and hold. So like, you know, if you've got rent lease options, rentals, uh, seller finance, you know, I cover the, those two major areas, buy and hold, or if you're selling a property. That's awesome. Well, Hey man, I want to, I want to encourage all of our listeners to check out the book when you, uh, when it is published, I can't wait to see this thing out there, man. Um, I want to really thank you for sharing with our audience and I really want everyone. If don't wait to get David's book as well, go out and get profit first by Mike McCallowitz as well. That'll give you a yep. nice framework. And then it'll, this will just kind of like stack upon that. Um, and, uh, and, and I want to encourage everybody to just develop those habits. Just like David said, one small step at a time, get some, get some help, get some guidance. Uh, and then, you know, in some period of time, whether it's a few months or it takes a year or two, like your business will look completely different. David, thank you so much for being on Life in Our Show, man. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Peter. Man, David's a sharp guy and I love, like he had so much to say about Profit First. And I'll tell you, I mentioned this in the episode, dude, we, we do Profit First with Life and Air and it, it has been transformative. Like, you know, I can, I have such a sense of peace and knowledge about my business. I don't have to wonder, you know, I don't have to pull a, a profit and loss every week necessarily to, to know what's going on. Like I can see it pretty clearly just uh, with, with the bank accounts and like, it's just such yeah. a nice feeling. Well, I like how you also talked about the expense part, right? The, the defense part and how he actually allocates different things, how he sees where the expenses go, which kind of expenses those are, and which to start eliminating first and that kind of stuff, right? Or working on yeah, that. Yeah, reduce, yep. Which, yeah, reduce, which to me, it tells me that in life on there, you guys are getting rid of the CEO position, right? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm firing myself. I'm costing the company too much money. <laughs> well, in all seriousness, man, it, it's true because like when you have a, a good grasp on what your expenses are, um, now you can look at these like with a critical eye and, and make decisions that serve the business. And I, the thing I love about Profit First is, you know, he mentioned the, the gap, you know, the gap accounting principles, generally accepted accounting principles, mm -hmm. where typically it's like, you know, revenue minus expenses equals profit, but there's never anything left because we just spend what we make. Right. But when you put profit first, when you put that money into the profit account, and again, you start off with a small percentage, you will learn how to, how to run your business on what's left. You know, I heard Tony Robbins give the example once. We said, listen, you know, if the government decided to impose an, an extra 10 or 20% tax on us, we'd all moan, groan, and complain. We'd pay it, and then we'd figure out a way to live on what's left. And so this is the exact same thing when it comes to your business. When you pay yourself first, you will figure out how to run the business on what's left. You have to, right? You're going to have to cut corners. You're, you may have to make some difficult choices and decisions, but you will figure it out. 
Uh, and that's when your business can turn the corner and become profitable. And I love what you said too, Peter, is like when you have profit, when you have a, a, uh, a bank account with money in it, uh, uh, that is, is a cushion for you. You make better decisions because you're not stressed out. You're not chasing your tail. Yep. You're not in survival mode. And now that actually snowballs and your business becomes more profitable because you can think more clearly. Right. And you actually follow the plan, if that makes any sense, because I find this, you know, with some of my students, when they come in and work with me is when their business is not doing so well, right? Not doing so hot. And they are kind of on this, you know, pay Peter to pay Paul kind of a thing. You start to flip flop from one, you know, strategy to another. Maybe this will work. Maybe this will work. Right. Right. And when you have that profit, when you have this, this system in place, you follow the plan because you're more confident about it. You're more, you know, at peace and all that kind of stuff. And it makes a big difference as far as the actual business operations of everything. But whether you're one person company or whether you're a hundred people company, you know, and one big takeaway I got from this too is this applies to everybody. He mentioned at one point in a podcast where they were running a six, seven figure company and the end of the month, they barely had anything left. You know, and a lot of companies out there, they say, well, we make, you know, it's a seven figure business. So tell me how much is left at the end of the month. Yeah, that's what yeah. I want to know. Right. Right. And that's, I think, applies to any business in today's world to be able to apply this kind of principles. And I love that they're kind of segmenting it into specific right. Uh, types of businesses. Well, that's a good point. And we didn't talk about this, but like revenue for the sake of revenue, that's ego. Like that's, that's just purely ego driven. What matters is what's left, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you make. It's, it matters what you, what you keep. And so running a lean business, one that is organized and uh, builds on, um, you know, a, a plan that will allow you to have the finances you want. Uh, that's the way to do it, right? It's don't don't just build this big monstrosity of a business that's gonna, you know, uh, just become a monster. Not only financially, and it takes a lot of, um, you know, a lot of money to maintain and a lot of overhead to to move forward. But also, like oftentimes, those businesses also consume your life in the process as well, right? And so yep. you got to look out for both of those. I think that's why a lot of people are doing 80, 90, 120 hours a week. Right. Well, because they're not profitable. Like they think right. they think bigger is better. And I'm if I if I only made another forty or fifty, hundred grand, right. I'd become profitable. No, your expenses are going up too. And right. so using something like this would really help you uh, in those regards. Yep. Yep. I totally awesome. Agree. Well, I listen, I hope you enjoyed the episode. This is a great one. Uh, really check out Profit First book. Check out David's book when it comes out. Uh, if you enjoyed it, we would love to hear from you. Leave us a review, leave us a rating, a comment. Uh, if you have any questions for us, you can uh, always reach us in the Life Inner app. And if you're not over there yet, this is a great place for conversations and discussions with other Life Inners to occur. And you can download it for your Android or iPhone device or go to the desktop version from lifeinner.com. And as always, it is a, an incredible, uh, humbling, and honoring pri pri privilege to serve you. Please uh, check us out next week. And uh, in the meantime, get, get going here with uh, this Profit First model. Peter, what's up? Yeah, and next episode, you will see him as Jason Vojo, not CEO. <laughs> I'm live in here. See you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>